time is very strange. It's like a movie. Uh, you, you want to know how it looks like in scene one, how it looks like in scene two, how in scene three. So you have ordered everything after each other. And to specify that order, that's what you call time. And time is that fourth dimension, which is something it's very hard to describe and put our hands on because it's just moving along and we still don't really know how to characterize it. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slow. A lifetime can be told in one minute or one minute can be expanded into an hour. So it's a, a, a constant working with, with this strange uh, uh, fluid thing that is time. In film, uh, you build with blocks of time. You freeze moments of time while capturing, expanding, compressing. When you edit, you make a rhythm. So as an experimentalist in the lab, we have timers and we measure time in terms of seconds or minutes or hours or days. Well, time, we usually measure with a clock. So, uh, for instance, here on Earth, you could use a grandmother's clock uh, to measure time. But then you can you could turn it around and you could actually use the biological clock to be a measure of time. You could say one uh, bing bong of your grandmother's clock, that is one unit of time, and to measure uh, the duration of something, you just count the number of uh, ding-dongs of your clock. The biological clock does go around and come back to the same point day after day after day. You need to measure time in terms of some unit cyclic movements. You sort of go around in a circle. That can be light moving between mirrors. And that might not be exactly 24 hours. All clocks are based on this, this same unifying principle. It might be circa 24 hours. It's about the same time uh, relative to the sun's position. Einstein, uh, he didn't like this fact that the grandmother's clock didn't work in space. Over all of evolution. He introduced the so-called light clock. Light was probably the most reliable signal in the environment. He took a simple device consisting of two mirrors. Year in, year out, day in, day out, you can predict when the sun is coming up and when it's going down. In which light goes back and forth and then the growing back and forth of light between the two mirrors is the analog of the ding-dong in your grandmother's clock. If your biological clock is listening only to the light-dark cycle, then you're in fine shape. But if you're confusing it and telling it that on weekends it can listen to the light-dark cycle, but during the work week it's listening to it's listening to the social clock, that that alarm clock, then uh, then that's when you have a bit of a problem. Hmm. In order to define the biggest time scale, that's only possible if there is a beginning of time. Um, I would think of a series of residencies that would be very short-term time. That, that transition from where, where we know that time exists and where we don't know how time is defined, that I would call the smallest uh, time scale. Oscillations, as it were, and then they would feed into larger scales and larger scales. And right in the middle is where biological life sits as we know it. I feel there is no beginning of time, that, that it was always there, and that in that sense there is no biggest time scale. Oh, I've gone totally blank. Time is certainly directional, because from one day to the next, we're never exactly the same. Well, it's comforting to think that things come back, that when we die, we come back. When the universe dies, it comes back. We mostly think that the future is ahead of us and the past is behind us. We can go to the past and we can go very far to the past. The only thing is that we really have aged in that day. Could we consider this Big Bang as the beginning of time? We're never repeating history exactly. But we have a chance to actually go back and do things again and again and again. We can also go to uh, events before the Big Bang. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it could be that the time has no starting point, that it was always there. The biological clock is um, almost like the fountain of youth. 
I find it difficult to, to imagine that we could go back in time. I think there's a direction in time, which is forward. You can also think of future and past being future above and past below. You stand on the things that you've uh, been through, the, the, your past, and your future is there, but there's always this moment of now that's always in between those two. It felt very uh, uh, convenient, like, ah, that, that gives a rest. <laughs> I don't have to run. It's there all the time. To characterize an event, you need space and time. Well, I guess space time is the idea that time and space are linked. So if you add up all events which took place 100 years ago, plus all events which took place 10 years ago, who take place now, 10 years later, 100 years later, if you add up this collection of all events, that is what we call in space time. Take a cake, and Newton would say, I always slice the cake in straight slices. Chuck, 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 chuck. Every slice represents all events at 8 o'clock, all events at 9 o'clock. But the viewpoint of Einstein is that the reality is the cake and the slicing is something that observers do. You could then slice the cake in a different way. I could also slice it uh, with an angle. Chuck, 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 chuck. And I could say, well, I call all events in this slice, this, this, this uh, rotated slice, that I call all events at 8 o'clock. And the next one I call all events at 9 o'clock. I need an ordering, but the way I order my events, that I can do in different ways. Mm. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs>